Hey, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, so in today's Bible mystery, we're going to speak a little bit about decoding the book of Revelation. And so we already know that for many centuries, many have sought to decode the book of Revelation, and many people has done great levels of extensive work to bring more clarity and accuracy to what it really is telling us. The book of Revelation has been one of the most popular books of the Bible uh, for us because of the season in which we are in, and we desire to know the mysteries and the secrets of God. But what we do know um, for sure is that the only way we can truly and properly decode the book of Revelation is through a close and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If we don't have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ, then it'll be easy for us to go off on our own little tangents when it comes to um, decoding the various aspects of the book of Revelation. It'll be easy for us to go down rabbit holes and then through the uh, finality of our minds create things which really uh, doesn't exist and really is not accurate and doesn't really have much substance because you can take one scripture in a Bible and interpret it in any way that you like and there's always a way to kind of prove your argument and fight for your argument to make it um, to make it seem like that your point is valid and it's true and the reason why I say this is because if that was not the case then we would not have the four different rapture views the pre-tribulation rapture the mid-tribulation rapture, the post-tribulation rapture, and the no rapture at all view. The funny thing is, if you look at all four views, you can validate it and you can kind of justify it, but at the same time, it would contradict uh, with the use of scriptures in a certain um, uh, intellectual way, you know, intelligent way. Um, so what I am doing today and decoding the book of Revelation, you may wonder, well, how will it be any different from what I will do that other people have already done? And, it, and the truth is, the only thing I want to do is use strictly the Bible. And I know you heard this one before that using strictly the Bible, you're going to prove this. Or I'm going to prove this and that is true. And even when the person uses strictly the Bible, you still have so many different interpretations of how the Bible is used to interpret certain things. Um, so am I going to so am I saying that I will have the most absolute truth compared to all others? That would be to speak in pride and I and the answer to that is no. Because only the Lord holds the keys to unlocking the book of Revelation. And it's only if he desires to share his secrets with you that you would be able to accurately unlock the small nuggets that paints the entire picture. Like the book of Revelation does not detail everything that's going to happen in, in the end times but it gives you the result of everything that's going to happen in the end time and so when we say the result it means that the method is not there like the method in which it will come to pass is hidden and the reason why it's hidden is because the avenues that can be taken to fulfill the result of what we read in the book of revelation is infinite there's so many different methods that the Lord can use to still bring about the end result of a thing. This is why it is not laid out step by step what the Lord is going to do, but he does highlight major milestones in the book of Revelation that will end up being the result of a list of actions that will take place now in our generation. Uh, and so what we're going to do, we're going to look at the book of Revel uh, Revelation chapter 13 and speak about the beast. Because we hear a lot about the beast and it gets pretty confusing as to whether the beast is an actual beast, whether it's a man or a group of um, a body of people, etc. Who knows, the beast can actually be, you know, a female dominated bestial system structure because, you know, the whole mighty movement of feminism and stuff and, you know, or it could be... You know dominated by men because you know of how uh, women are treated in different parts of the world and all this other stuff we really don't know and that's only speculation and holds no real weight so what i will do is that i will try my best to use a method that seemed to be basic and easy to understand and figure out what we can learn the small nuggets we can learn about the beast in revelation chapter 13. and so in part one of our study the headline says basic math equation so uh we're gonna go into math real quick i know that's not many of our strong points 
and don't worry I'm not gonna use anything uh, complicated it's just gonna be real basic math that we've all done in junior high school but now with the current generation in elementary school <laughs> um, so if you look at uh, bullet point a before you so we have X plus Y equals Z what is Z so if I present to you this basic equation there are about three answers you can give for Z right now is that it is impossible to solve because it's not enough information or that it could be infinite possibilities and that we could put whatever information we want in there or that it's just an open-ended question and really is subjective in nature and doesn't really require for us to answer for Z we could be uh, philosophical about it and this is how we are today in the body of Christ when it comes to decoding Revelation is that we look at the book of Revelation from a X plus Y equals Z standpoint where we would say that it's impossible to know what the book of Revelation is talking about or that there's such infinite possibilities where we come up with our uh, many different uh, eschatology uh, systems and eschatology processes to trying to define what means what and you know the book of Revelation when it comes to the tribulation when it comes to the rapture when it comes to identifying the beast and stuff and so you see that happening more than ever before in the body of Christ is option B the infinite possibility where we're having so many different ideas and that if there's one little small event that happens in the world we'll say oh look you know biblical prophecy being fulfilled and you know another event happens that's like only this small little event is like oh look biblical prophecy is being fulfilled let me show you how this event relates to biblical prophecy so that's the infinite possibility um, solution that we see heavily in effect right now and is causing great confusion and for others it's just an open-ended question like you know only the Lord knows or Z could be whatever it is it is it, it's whether it's something significant to consider or something insignificant to consider you know it's kind of like a wishy-washy maybe it is maybe it isn't we'll see um, God is in control um, but then I wouldn't even want to say wishy-washy because that could be offensive in describing those with the C answer because when it's when it is an open-ended question it just creates an atmosphere for debate more than anything else like what does the lord mean by this what does the lord be mean by that you know what's the proper english used to do this and that but i don't want to be offense uh, i don't want to offend anybody with any of these three options in a way that i'm presenting it and i do apologize if it seems like i'm coming off in a snarky way that is not my objective at all so i need to correct myself now and make sure that i'm speaking humbly about this and i don't speak in a dominating voice that is very common um that is very common today in the many YouTube videos and etc. that you see. Um, but you know, it's the right to say that it's impossible to solve uh, if we have not yet come to the knowledge of God to give us a little more understanding to what's in the book of Revelation. Um, and it's a right that it's infinite possibilities because our God is infinite ultimately, and the Lord loves it when we uh, pursue Him and trying to seek out the many different ways that describes the characteristic of our God. And it's okay if it's an open-ended question as well, because this leaves room for us to figure out more of the right answer or, or the right questions to ask and to see what is really relevant for the body of Christ to take on and what is really irrelevant. And so all three, you know, are okay uh, as long as it draws us to want to find out a deeper understanding in God. And so looking at B right bullet B we're gonna actually get some more defined information in here to see uh, with greater clarity uh, what can happen when certain variables are already identified so in bullet A it says X plus Y equals Z when you give a person that equation it can mean anything to anyone and any way in which they want to proceed with it uh, but when we go to bullet B we actually define two variables we have X equals 5 and Y equals 10 so now if I ask the question again what is Z then it will say okay well we could find out what Z is because we know that X equals 5 and Y equals 10 therefore 5 plus 10 equals 15 so now Z is so now we solve for Z's uh, Z is the number 15 and the reason why I bring this up, the bottom line, and uh, the bottom line is the statement that you see as follows. 
It says, to properly solve some of the most basic equations in the book of Revelation, we would need some defined variables to get the answer. These variables are found and defined throughout scripture. So if we approach the book of Revelation from a mathematical standpoint, because you know our God is all about math, <laughs> and when we look at the laws of gravity and the things that governs the universe and the makeup of our body structure, it is all down to the pinpoint T, even to the rotation of the earth and its evolution around the sun and all these other many different mathematical and physics equations that the Lord put in place. The Lord is really big on math. <laughs> and even... Uh, when it speaks about the number of the bees, he says that you calculate the number of the bees. More math. The Lord is, is giving us math. He is very, you know, into math. That's it. You know, <laughs> that is how he put everything in order. And so with, uh, with that being said, we're going to go to the book of Revelation and read some things in the book of Revelation and define some key points in it. And so let us begin by reading Revelations chapter 13. We're going to read from verses 1 through 6. And this will be uh, the bulk of what we're really going to cover. Uh, we don't want to draw this out too long because I don't want to make this too long with a whole bunch of mathematical equations and stuff like that. And then people just lose interest. It's easy to lose interest once, especially in the topic that you may not really be too concerned with since it's not many of our strong suits. Um, anyway, and it begins, it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, or who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to make con to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Um, before we move on to the first point of the statement, something that we must remember is that everything in the kingdom of God happens in the spirit first. And then once it occurs in the spirit, it, it then begins to manifest in the natural realm. And we understand this because the spirit comes first. The spirit is the real reality. And what we see in the natural realm around us is the manifestation of something that took place in the spirit. So therefore, when we read about the, the beast coming out to sea and its description and the actions in which he takes in blasphemy. Understand that this beast is literal. This beast is real. This beast is in the spiritual dimension, right? So these things has already manifested in the spiritual realm. But what we are in confusion about in the body of Christ is what is the natural manifestation of this beast? What does it look like in a natural sense? We don't know. And this is where we have um, from the beginning of our study where we spoke about the three options where it's impossible to solve or that it's infinite possibilities or that is an open-ended question and for many centuries many have debated what is the natural sense of the scripture because uh, to be honest with you in spiritual um, language and spiritual terms this beast is literal Everything in the kingdom of God that speaks of, you know, the spiritual dimension that speaks of something that is spirit is literal. There is no reason for the Lord to make up, you know, any metaphors about a spiritual entity if it's not real. And so what we need to understand and what we like to understand is what is the physical manifestation of it? Because we are about to see the physical manifestation of this beast coming out the sea. And we really want to know. Um, how we could be aware of its, you know, movement, you know, because, you know, the, the beast comes in subtly and comes in in a way that is hard to see at times. And so many people are actually looking for a beast that's going to be this, that is described in uh, Revelation chapter 13. Um, but the reality is we won't see a spiritual beast unless the Lord rem removes the veil from our eyes and we can speak and we can see into the spiritual dimension. Unless the Lord does this, we will not actually see this beast as long as that veil separates us from being able to see into that realm. So what we have to be on the alert for is what is the physical manifestation of this beast, which is now 
and effect in the spiritual realm. And now we are at um, bullet point alpha A um, for this equation. And it says solve for variable Z, which is who is who is this beast? And so a few variables that we can already identify to help us have an, uh, more of a narrow path to walk to identify this specific beast. And remember that we can find these variables throughout scripture. We can find these answers throughout scripture to help us to know who this spiritual beast is. And when we go to X, for example, what do we know about the beast so far? What variables are already defined about this beast to come? Well, in A, it says um, the beast comes out of the sea. We got that, right? It comes out of water. So that means that the habitation of this beast has to be in water. And B, it says that this beast has seven heads. Okay, so this beast has multiple heads. And this beast has ten horns upon its head. So with these three variables, we can go into greater detail in the book and the scriptures to find out what does these you know attributes of the beast have in common with uh, what the Lord has already revealed in his holy word and then when we go to why looking at the variables of why what we have here is that one head has a mortal head wound it was mortally wounded next it says that the beast speaks blasphemous words right he uh, well not blasphemous words yeah he does he speaks blasphemous words and also has blasphemies on his head um, and C, it says that the beast is very proud against God. Um, so looking at bullet B, it says, what is Z? So what is the answer for Z in this equation? If we know that X variables and the Y variables, so X plus Y equals Z. So what is Z? And the answer that is given here is that variable Z equals Leviathan, the sea serpent. So the beast that comes out of the sea in the book of Revelations 13 is Leviathan. And the proof that we have here is when we go to scripture, it says <clears throat> in Psalms 74, Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and givest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. And so when we go back to the scripture, right, Re Revelations chapter 13, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his head and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So Psalm 74 tells us that the Lord, thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gives him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Next, when we go to Isaiah chapter 27, it says, In that day the Lord with his, with his sore, great, and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So this beast out of the book of Revelation, where did he come out of? Right? In Revelation chapter 13, he came out of the sea. And it speak about a sword that the Lord is going to use to destroy Leviathan. And it stated already in Psalm 74 that one of his heads will be that his heads will be breaking to pieces. And in, in Revelation chapter 13, we heard that we see how his head was mortally was mortally wounded as on to death. That was a mouthful. Sorry there, brothers and sisters. Uh, and then when we go to Job 41, <clears throat> it says his heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid by reason of breaking, they purify themselves, which means that they use the bathroom on themselves. <clears throat> Sorry. And it says, The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear and dart, nor the habergeon. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as double. He laugheth at the uh, shaking of a spear. So this here speaks about the characteristics of Leviathan. It says that his heart is as firm as stone. What it means is that he is a proud beast. 
and that no one is able to do any damage against that beast. And then when we read in Revelations chapter 13 again, it says in verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And it also says um, later on, let me see, give me a second. All right, and when we go to verse number four, it says, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And so looking at those portions of scripture in Revelation chapter 13, and then we go to Job 41, which describes the sea serpent, it speaks of Leviathan, this spiritual beast. And then when we go to Job chapter 41 and verse 33, it says, upon earth, there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. The names of blasphemy. So when we behold Leviathan, the sea serpent that is spoken of in the book of Revelation chapter 13, it says that there is none made like him and that he is without fear. Um, and in Revelation 13, it says that who is able to make war with this beast? Who is able to overcome him? No, none can overcome this beast. And it says, he belongeth, in Job 41, verse 34, it says, he, be he beholdeth all high things. And then when we go to Revelation chapter 13, it says here, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And in verse 6, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So you see the connection here that in Job 41, it says that he beholdeth all high things. And it is the Lord who dwell in the high places. And this beast in the book of Revelation 13 is speaking blasphemies against God. And then it says here in conclusion in verse 41, verse 34, is that he is a king over all the children of pride. So this beast sits as king over the nations, over the kingdom of darkness, over the kingdom of, of Satan, pretty much. And then when we, let me see if I can find it here. Is it here where it speaks about the authority that the beast gives them? Uh, just give me a second while I screen through this real quick, brothers and sisters. Yeah, upon his head, blasphemies, and I saw wounded, and power was given unto him. All right, I think it was in verse 4, it says, And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And so when we look here, is that it says that the dragon has given power unto the beast in which the beast will reign and then they will worship the beast. And then going back again, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth, but this is very crucial to pick up on. It says that he is a king over all the children of pride. So Satan gives this beast power over the nations and people worship this beast. In Revelation 13 and then we also see here that he is a king over the children of pride and I'm gonna stop here because I don't want to make these videos too long I want to make sure I go in depth with each of the videos that I release to you but what I desire to leave with you before we conclude this portion of our series for those are going to be many parts of this series as I'm able to put the small little teachings together is that if you go to the to the part where it says Leviathan is the serpent's seed from the book of Genesis right like it's right there before you in the notes that I have uh, presented to you so we can all follow along and be on the same page it says Leviathan is the serpent's seed from the book of Genesis when we go to Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 it says and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel so this ancient prophecy, one of the first prophecies to ever be set in place in a book, um, in the word of God, speaks about this end time event, which is about to, uh, which is about to take place. I'm sorry. And it says that there will be enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. It said that the serpent will have his head bruised. The seed of the serpent will have his head bruised. And we just read in Psalms 74. 
and in Isaiah 27, right? And how the Lord will break to pieces the head of Leviathan. And also how the Lord will have a sword which shall destroy the serpent and that he shall be cast, you know, he shall be defeated. This is that slay the dragon that is in the sea. And so when we look at Isaiah 27, it is telling us of the continuation of the fulfillment of the prophecy that shall occur in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where the enmity between the woman and the dragon shall finally be put to rest. And if you look at the book of Revelation 13, and then you go back one chapter, who is the figures that is spoken of? in Revelation chapter 12. Remember the sign in the sky? Remember the woman that was pregnant ready to give birth to a man-child? And the dragon that was there ready to devour the man-child once the man-child was born? So it is very interesting how there is war between the woman and this serpent, the woman and the dragon. But then there is a woman, the woman who gives birth to the man-child at the same time, you have the dragon in Revelation 13 that calls forth for his seed out of the sea. So we're about to see Revelation 12 and 13 meet Genesis 3 verse 15 in a way that's going to bring about the ultimate fulfillment of that scripture, of that ancient scripture that was spoken of in the very beginning, the very foundations of the word of God. And so I hope I was able to present that to you without bringing any confusion but i will reiterate it one more time and then i'll be finished and i'll end it there so leviathan is the serpent seed from the book of genesis where um the woman that is spoken of her seed is spoken of in revelation chapter 12 and it says and i will put enmity between thee and the woman so that's the dragon and the woman and then there will also be enmity between thy seed and her seed, between the man-child of the woman and Leviathan has come, that comes up out of the sea. And it says that it shall bruise thy head, which means the woman's seed shall bruise the head of Leviathan, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And we see an iteration of this occur when our Lord Jesus Christ walked the earth, um, and he put to death once and for all sin and all of mankind so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life um, and there is also one last piece to that puzzle right because remember the serpent bruised the heel of our Lord but yet it did not um, it did not stop the Lord from from uh, fulfilling his purpose but now it's going to come to time when the seed of the woman shall bruise the heads of Leviathan and fulfill Psalms 74 and Isaiah 27 where it says in 27 and that day which is not a day today but a day in the future in the end time and that day the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent even Leviathan that crook serpent which is the seed of the serpent and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea this time is coming and is coming quickly, brothers and sisters. Thank you for uh, tuning in to this Bible mystery, and I pray that you was blessed by the hearing of this word.